uh, it's an initiative from uh, two NGOs uh, from Kerala, uh, Kota Mitra Society and Alpi Naturalist Society. And uh, yeah, I think uh, over to you, uh, uh, Ashok, if you are ready. Good evening, friends. So yeah, I'm Ashok Senmukta. Many of you know me. And uh, uh, first of all, I must admit that uh, I am uh, a learner like you who has been uh, learning about uh, butterflies, identification, their behavior, ecology, early stages, and uh, other uh, related activities related to butterflies since last 10 years. And the journey was uh, very uh, steep. Uh, curve was there. I tried to learn things and still I'm learning. So if there are, I'll try to be as fair and as correct as possible. And uh, this particular uh, presentation or this particular talk is basically uh, not to make you understand about butterflies. It is basically focused towards uh, identification of butterflies of Western Guards. Now, uh, before uh, my session, there was another session by probably by some other uh, expert who who would actually discuss about butterflies in general. But I am going to discuss butterflies in uh, specific identification keys of uh, some butterflies. Since there are uh, about 347 species of butterflies in Western Guards, it will be impossible for me for to discuss each and everything here. So I'll keep my uh, focus on species which are. Uh, basically, uh, you know, commonly seen and which are cryptic in nature, kind of they are similar in nature, not cryptic, similar in nature. So I will focus on those species and try to uh, compare and contrast them by keeping them uh, in one screen. So let us begin our journey. Now, uh, as you know, uh, butterfly identification is uh, not uh, that uh, difficult uh, and uh, as compared to identification of moths, uh, butterfly identification is much uh, more easier in most of the cases. Now there are some basic indicators for butterflies uh, for its identification and there are some specialized indicators. So basic indicators include the size of the butterfly and uh, basic geometry of the, uh, the wings and where the wing shape and the number of the, the tails present or absent and those kinds of things and the base color of the butterfly also is an indicator of the species and uh, how it uh, flies and how it perches those are some basic indicators for a butterfly to uh, to uh, to make it uh, for make a uh, the person to identify a butterfly sometimes with expertise or with experience we can uh, easily tell uh, a species name by just looking at the butterfly which is flying past you it may not be sitting anywhere. It will be easy, it will be easy for you to identify when you ex uh, get experience. So I hope that there are people here who are uh, who are uh, having some experience and there are a few people who are novice also. I am trying to address, I will try to address people of uh, this both categories here. Okay, there are specialized uh, feature which includes, uh, uh, you know, there are uh, the, the, the color spots on the uh, wings and, uh, you know, there are uh, the, the, the specialized uh, uh, ocelles and veins, uh, lunules and uh, uh, some other features in the uh, uh, wings. Okay, and uh, uh, the veins and uh, the presence of uh, absence of some spots and marking on the veins. And uh, apart from this, we can also identify finally a butterfly in the laboratory procedures by uh, dissection of the male genitalia and of course further going into the DNA uh, bar, uh, sequencing. So we'll, uh, since we are uh, natural, nature lovers and we don't want to go into the scientific uh, side of uh, butterfly studies, we'll keep our uh, focus on uh, identification of butterflies by its looks, by the morphological traits. So I'll uh, come to the next slide. Okay, now the next slide uh, is uh, uh, okay. The next slide shows uh, the the four wing of a butterfly with uh, various 
wins because before before i start you know actually diving into uh, identify butterflies have a gross idea of please keep it in mind it's not that you'll be able to learn and understand this in one day the four wing has got you know 12 wings out of that uh, there is a vein called 1a and 1b and there is 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 the vein number 1 always starts from the wing base and all the other veins they start from the uh, cell the cell is black colored the dark colored you can see uh, the in between the, this is a cell this is the black colored uh, okay this is a cell here and this is a v1 a and 1b and b2 b3 b4 b5 b6 b7 b8 b9 b10 b11 and b12 these are the 12 veins which are present in a four wing okay so i will not go into the much details of this and i'll not, not make it a scientific science class so just keep it in mind it will may be helpful in further slides okay uh, now uh, the hind wings has got eight veins okay it has got eight veins and uh, apart from veins the cell, the cell is also present uh, and also there are uh, parts of the wings you know there are various areas of the wings we have got the wing base the wing base is attached to the the it is the hind wing i am talking about the hind wing both the wings are attached to the uh, body uh, here the base of the wing and uh, the upper part is called the costa uh, then we've got the apex of the wing the termen uh, then we have got the, uh, the 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 junction of the termen and the dorsum called the tornus and uh, you know uh, the dorsum is the uh, so the wing part of the wing basically hind wing it is uh, visible and the forewing it's not visible the dorsum is main, mostly not visible for the forewing of the butterfly uh, but rest of the areas are well uh, visible okay now there are eight veins for uh, uh, hind wing okay there are a, a, then one a and one one b is not there one a one two three four five six seven and eight there are eight veins okay this is about uh, the uh, the vein venation of a, a particular uh, butterfly wing. I will not go into details of venation. Uh, keep in mind there are 12 veins in the four wing with a cell, and there are eight veins in uh, the four wing with uh, with uh, okay the cell. Okay, I'll go to the next slide. Now there are uh, various areas of a wing. Can you see the areas? I have uh, tried to draw it. It's a very rough drawing. I'm not very good at uh, drawing. So this is. Uh, Again, uh, you can see the various colored areas. We have got the basal area and the post basal area, the discal area, the post discal area, the sub apical area, and the apical area. Okay, so uh, these are the areas of the wing. Uh, again, I have, I have shown here the base, the costa, the termen, the tornus, and the dorsum. Uh, so, if you just keep it in mind, and the cell is also available here, so this is going to help you. Uh, to identify butterflies because the presence and absence of spots and markings in uh, our color patterns in a particular uh, area also is a key indicator for identification of butterflies. Uh, so I just keep it in mind. Uh, if you can take a screenshot, if you keep, keep it, so it will be helpful in future. Uh, uh, so now I'll go to the next one. Now, uh, come to the butterflies of Western Guards. So in Western Guards, we have got 347 as per the uh, book uh, given by uh, Dr. Milan Bakare and uh, Heman Dogle, the recent uh, field guide, which is uh, also with me. Uh, it's one of the best books you can have. It's a profitable book. You cannot carry in the field, of course. This is the best book. I don't know whether Dr. and uh, Heman are again in a move to reprint them. So as per this book, uh, there are 19 uh, swallowtail species in Western Guards. Uh, big swallowtails, big butterflies. Uh, yellows and whites are 35. Uh, the brush footed butterflies and nymphalites or nymphalites are 103. Lysonites are 102. The metal marks are the judies, we can say in South India. They have got two judies and uh, they have got 86 skippers for the Hesperidae family. So this is the uh, basic uh, no, presence of butterflies of 346 species, 47 species, which spans from Gujarat. Uh, and goes up to uh, the, 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 the southern uh, tip of uh, Western Ghats and spans, spans from the Kerala coast up, up to the eastern slopes of 
the Nilgiris. So that is how the Western Ghat, uh, most of you know, know it, how is Western Ghat uh, actually is spanning in, uh, across, the, uh, across the peninsular part of the India. So uh, this is the, uh, this is the, uh, um, this, you know, recently we have added one more butterfly here. That is uh, the common tech which was photographed uh, in uh, the, uh, in the Kaiga area or that near Vibhuti Falls by one of uh, the photographers who is, uh, you know, it is a new addition to Western Ghats. Uh, you know, if the viable population, if it is found there, then we can say it is there. So we have to go and search it. Okay, this is the new uh, species which have been added to uh, Western Ghats. Now, I will come to the solid oils identification first. Uh, basic identification includes, uh, uh, these, uh, these butterflies are bigger, larger in uh, size, in Western Ghats especially. But if you go to northeast, there is a species which is called the dragon rails, which are very small, smaller, as small, you know, you cannot, you sometimes may, may not see it uh, sitting on the ground. So that is the smallest, uh, uh, you know, the pavilion uh, found in India. I'm not talking about those butterflies which are found in uh, northeast, I'm talking about the butterflies of Western Guards. And they are all large, either black-bodied or red-bodied butterflies. And uh, the hind wings have four appearance like a swallow tail, swallow's tail, that's why they're called swallow tail. And uh, most of the hind wing, most of the species have a tail in the hind wing. A uh, few of them doesn't have, like, uh, you know, we talk about uh, uh, the southern uh, bird wing or uh, the blue mormon, they don't have tails. And now the specialized uh, indicators say the, the vein 1A is absent in the hind wing. These solid tails have no 1A vein in the hind wing. So this is something specialized. So we'll not discuss it in details. They have got long. Uh, uh, proboscis that tarsal claws on the legs. The hind wings cannot cover the abdomen. Hind wings cannot cover the abdomen. Abdomen is long. It cannot fully cover the abdomen. So this is the general idea of identification of uh, swallow tails. But looking at the pictures and looking at the butterflies will give you a better idea. So let us come to the first uh, colorful slide for you. The various peacocks which are available in the Western Guards. You can see there are three peacocks available here. Uh, this is the uh, your uh, the Malabar banded swallowtail, Papilio Buddha. This is butterfly is the uh, is also the state butterfly of Kerala. It is one of the beautiful species which is found uh, mostly during the post and pre monsoon just the monsoon shower starts they will uh, be on wings and they survive till october end beyond that uh, only a few species are there their population goes down and uh, see uh, this uh, species is distinctively uh, you know, featuring a broad discal band which is showing white but sometimes it is because of uh, uh, the the scales of uh, the scale structures uh, it can also sometimes show the bluish sheen on the wings. Okay, and uh, this is the second one, uh, which is Paris peacock. The Paris peacock is having a wing with uh, a thinner band, thinner discal band. This band is thinner as compared to your uh, Malabar banded peacock, this is a very thin band. But this thin band is hiding on the hind wing a blue patch. There is a blue patch. Which I will uh, probably be showing you a blue patch later on, uh, not in this slide, I am not included here. And uh, <coughs> these two are <coughs> mostly Western Ghat species. They are found in the localities with good evergreen forest and river patches. But the third one, which is a dry area species, found in the uh, western, the eastern part of the Western Ghats, especially Tamil Nadu and the uh, adjoining Kerala, that bordering areas of Kerala and uh, Karnataka, this common banded peacock, Pabilio crino, it is also a beautiful butterfly. It, it almost looks like uh, somewhere in between the Paris peacock and uh, the Malabar banded peacock. The bands are very prominent but narrow. The bands are very prominent but narrow. Uh, it is seen very bluish here because of the angle of the sun, sun rays, but sometimes it may become uh, greenish also because of the, because of, uh, the, the shades of the, uh, uh, wings, the, uh, the wings. So these are the very common, there are not nothing much to be learned about this butterflies. You can see the hind wings are also very, very specific. specific. The Paris peacock has uh, the crowns which are 
the crowns which are uh, uh, which are very prominent whereas the, the common minor peacock crowns are not that elaborative and not that spectacular uh, similarly with the uh, common that uh, malabar minor peacock also the hind wing the marginal uh, spots are not that prominent as it is found in the uh, in the your, in your uh, paris peacock so with this i will just switch uh, to the next uh, slide because i am not going to discuss much about peacock because they are distinctively different from each other so i started with uh, uh, peacock because it is the most attractive fast flying uh, uh, swallow tails found in western ghats two of them are found in the evergreen uh, uh, forests and the third one is found in the dry uh, and scrub forest of western ghats Okay. Oh, sorry. What happened? Okay. Now I come to the second one. The the second butterfly. There are two similar butterflies. Uh, but for some this is similarity is uh, not uh, uh, that uh, that appealing because they know that uh, they are two different butterflies uh, see one is uh, papilio uh, limodon or the malabar banded swallowtail which is a predominantly western ghat species and uh, second one is our common mormon it is everywhere found uh, from uh, uh, you know every state uh, possibly has this uh, common mormon, mormon butterfly see that there are similarities on these two species and the dissimilarities uh, are basically the the malabar banded swallowtail is a huge butterfly much more bigger than the common mormon and the bands in the four wing if you see these bands if you see this band here there are bands here this band stretches from the base of the or what is this 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 area uh, and it it goes to the apex of the uh, apex of the wing uh, this common mormon has uh, marginal spots which mimics kind of it is similar but not that similar because it is totally discal band and but it is a marginal band for uh, for your uh, common mormon they are not very similar species uh, but uh, sometimes uh, you know for a novice or newcomer they may look similar but they are totally different species and uh, they may look similar but this papilio lamoron is a much uh, larger species than uh, the uh, common mormon and also the this papilio lamoron or the malabar banded solitaire uh, malabar banded solitaire has a very distinctive uh, egg laying feature where it starts laying eggs one on top of the other you know just like a tower of hanoi or, or or a pyramid it start or not a pyramid or a monument kind of you know kutub minar type it is stack one egg over the other so this is the feature of uh, this papilio lamoron it is also schedule one species as per the wildlife uh, act of uh, 1972 common mormon um, you know is a very common species but uh, they both look very similar so i'll go to the next slide uh, ashok sorry to button in between uh, if you can uh, just clear all your annotations it would be helpful otherwise this uh, drawings will be there in the, all the slides how to clear annotations uh, uh, there is an option for you or, or just disable we will deal that i mean disable that and okay. once you a uh, one moment bit uh, record Okay, one minute. Allow participants show names. Okay, share them. Now sh clear annotations. How to do that? That's that's we'll do it. I mean, Karthik is there. He'll take care of it. Karthik, can you do okay, that? Okay. So I'll I okay. I'll go to the next slide. Now these two are very similar butterflies, the Malabar Raven and the Common Mime. These two are very similar butterflies, but they are different. The most striking difference between the malabar raven and common mime is the presence of a spot at the end cell this spot white spot can you see in both the wings if you can see it i think i can see it 
I can I can show you here. Here there is a spot here at the end of the cell. This spot is present only in Malabar Raven and it is absent in a common mind. So this is uh, which is uh, which makes this butterfly different from each other. Also in the hind wing, you can see here in a common mind this. Uh, both the skull streaks are much longer than that is present in uh, a Malabar raven. Also, there is a patch of orange in the um, in the marginal band. Uh, in the uh, if you see the hind wing or the close wing, you'll be able to see it. This orange orange spots are there in a common mind, which is absent in a Malabar raven. But in a field, sometimes uh, this. Uh, oriental common mind, uh, the form, form Clashia. There are two forms of mind. One is Clashia, one is Decimalis. This Clashia form uh, sometimes uh, looks very similar to the common raven. Uh, both of them appear in the same locality. They have different nose plants, of course, and, uh, and the difference is very, very, uh, very, very, uh, no, very clear and uh, distinctive. Uh, since the spot is absent and or present in uh, present in uh, um, that is uh, Malabar Raven and absent in common mind. These are the two differences which make these two butterflies different, but they are very similar to each other. Now I am coming to some very. Uh, 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 Ashok, sorry to dis uh, button again. Can you please go uh, back and do that because otherwise this will be there all the slides. Okay, no I have to do that. Can you uh, clear all, or probably start sharing again? Stop it and uh, oh, I, then don't do that. Okay. Uh, I have to clear annotations there. Spotlight clear. Yeah, gone. Okay, done. Yes. Is it okay? Yeah, it's perfect. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, David. you probably use, yeah, it's fine. You probably use the cursor. Don't uh, uh, sketch it. It will it will continue. Ah, it is okay. We're done. Okay, thank you. Continue. Next Sorry. one. So next is uh, a slide with the crimson rose and the common mormon female uh, Romulus form. See how strikingly similar these two species are. Very, very similar. Uh, the difference between the two is, first of all, when you see in flight, it is almost impossible for a newcomer to distinguish between uh, between a, a crimson rose and a common normal um, female. This crimson rose is a unpalatable butterfly, as you know, and uh, this common normal is a mimic which uh, a, which follows the Batesian mimicry and you know mimics the common uh, crimson rose here. This. Common Norman female is a black bodied butterfly and the crimson rose is a red bodied butterfly. But you see the striking uh, similarity between the, uh, between the two. Uh, but when you closely see the orientation of spots, spots uh, on the, uh, especially the hind wing, you will be able to make the difference very clearly. First of all, you can see in uh, common Mormon, the form Romulus, the margin is having red. That the red margin is present, which is not present in a crimson rose. When you see the red margin, this beyond this lunule, there are red margins here. I'll annotate it once again. Okay. I will. No, I cannot annotate it here. Sorry. Chalo, this is, uh, uh, and also, if you see, See, these are the red crescents here. And uh, then uh, also the orientations of these spots. This spot here, I have to change the color of the spot. This, uh, uh, this, uh, what is that? I have to change the color. Um, okay, I'll change the white. Now, I, again, I'm drawing it here. This, series of spots is quite different from this series of spots here. You can make out the difference here between a, a crimson rose and a common horn one. Uh, and also uh, this, uh, these spots are 
more flatter, more thinner than the spots which are uh, present in a in a common Mormon female. So these are basic differences. But when you see the body, that is very clear. And also you can see the eyes here. Can you see the eyes here? Which makes it a red-bodied solitaire and the black eyes makes it a common Mormon. The common Mormon eyes are black and you can see the eyes of a crimson rose. So that also is a difference between the form Romulus and uh, the crimson rose, which are very commonly found butterflies uh, in Western Ghats and they coexist together uh, in the same locality. And the flight pattern is similar, and, and uh, but they lay eggs on different uh, host plants. Uh, you know that makes also the, the difference between them. Them. So these are the differences between a crimson rose and uh, a common Mormon, uh, which is the form Romulus. And I'll go to the next slide. Clear the drawings and. Go to the next slide. So similar, we have got a common Mormon female from from uh, uh, Romulus. Okay, this one again. Uh, okay, Romulus and previous one was Romulus. Okay, there is some mistake here. So this should be form Stichius. This is uh, the form Stichius. And uh, this crimson, this is the common rose, which is also another unpalatable butterfly. And uh, this is uh, the common Mormon female form Stichius, which is which mimics the uh, common uh, rose. And uh, also that they behave similar way. The flight pattern is same, and you know leisurely they fly. But you can see the big difference. First difference, if I show you, is the for a common. I want the annotation starting. Okay, then uh, what is that? I want the annotation. Okay, I'll, I'll annotate. Okay, you can see here. One second. Why can't I annotate? One second. Okay. You can see the wing here. The wing is uh, basically a more curvier than the wing, which is more pointed in case of uh, common Mormon. Okay. Also, the eyes area is having uh, red here, which is black in case of common Mormon. And you can also see the spot here. Uh, there are four spots here, but along with the fourth spot, there is a fifth spot in place of. A common Mormon, which is not present in a, a common rose. This there is no spot here, but in case of common Mormon, the spot is present. So that makes the common Mormon different from a common rose. Also, the margin has got red crescents, which is not present in a common rose. You can see there are the red is missing here, and the red is uh, the red color is present here in the wing. Uh, the uh, tails and uh, the marginal area. This is uh, the difference between common rose and uh, the common Mormon form stichius. These are they also coexist together, and uh, you know we often get confused when you see them in flight, or you know even experts also get confused when you see the body color. Then it's okay. It's a common rose or a common Mormon. I'll go to the next slide. I'll clear the annotations drawings. Okay, now this is about the common. Uh, there are 19 uh, papillonoids. Other papillonoids are uh, very distinctive, and uh, so short tails and all those are very, uh, uh, very, uh, very distinctive. And there is no similarity between uh, the short tails and other other uh, or other uh, papillonoids. So I'm coming to uh, the pirates, yellows and whites. So uh, that the main feature of yellows and whites is none of them have tails. No yellows and white have tails. And they are either yellow or orange in color. And uh, with one exception, that is the wanderer. 
the dark and the, the and the indian wanderer they, they they look closer to an infilite than a, a pirate but both are uh, you know pirates and not infilites now many of the them have orange and black markings they are fast flyers uh, males of those uh, pirates they often large gather in large numbers and do mud puddling and uh, many of the you know species in the pirates are migratory in nature including emigrants uh, puffins and you know you have got the the albatrosses they are migratory in nature the uh, first slide is uh, the common grass yellow and the three spot grass yellow this is something from where you will have to be bit a uh, bit uh, uh, careful and you know and understanding try to understand what i am trying to see here see here see here i'll uh, open you can see here i'll open the annotations again here on this slide and uh, Okay, I'll take this turtle once again. Okay. You can see here. Okay, I've changed this. Okay, it's gone to the next slide. Sorry. Mouse. Okay, I have to go to this slide. Okay. Draw. See here in a common grass yellow. The common grass yellow, we have got, uh, uh, there are two spots inside the cell. There are two spots. This is very, very, sometimes these spots, they fade, but still we will be make, we will be able to make out the spots here. And in three spot grass yellow, the cell has got three spots. One, two, one, two, and three. There are three spots in the cell of uh, the, in the four wing, uh, the underside of the four wing. There are three spots in three spot grass yellow and two spots in common grass yellow. These two coexist together, same place. The difference between uh, the two is, uh, you know, this three spot grass yellow uh, lays a plenty uh, number of eggs, uh, clutches of eggs, whereas this common grass yellow uh, lays eggs one or two, so one, one or two on, on, the, on the leaf. Uh, and this you can see. Uh, this the, uh, this two spots and three spots that don't you need, you need not consider the end cell spot that is not required this is not required this is not to be counted but beyond that there are two spots here for uh, common grass yellow and three spots for three spot grass yellow this is the difference between uh, the two the common grass yellow and the three spot grass yellow if you want to see them in the Field. I clear this again, drawings, all the drawings. I'll go to the next slide. You can see the small grass yellow and the uh, and the spotless grass yellow. These two species, sometimes the wet season form of the, uh, the, the both the species creates a lot of confusion, but uh, there is no confusion when you see the identification features here. Uh, you can uh, see that for a for this uh, small grass yellow there are two spots here always at the end of the cell of the hind wing there are two spots for a small grass yellow which is not the case with the spotless grass yellow but in the spotless grass yellow in the dry season form there are hardly any spots it is very easy to uh, identify them and also you can see that in a small grass yellow, the shape of the wing, the shape of the wing is more, uh, cur the curvature is more prominent, whereas in a spotless grass yellow, this is very straight. This area is straight and the angle, it makes a very uh, steep angle here at the uh, tornus. Whereas in case of small grass yellow, this is not the case. And also you can see that there are spots on the wing margin these spots in the fore wing as well as the hind wing that also is an indicate indicator for it to be a small grass yellow but this spotless grass yellow hardly has any spots on it but the uh, you know in the wet season form of the spotless grass yellow 
it looks similar to the small grass yellow uh, but you have to be very careful in spotting these two spots these two spots are very prominent in uh, small grass yellow which is not present in spotless grass yellow again come to mouse and uh, to clear this drawings and go to the next slide oh this is something which is very interesting one spot grass yellow versus the nilgiri grass yellow say till away I, I think one or two years back oh it was very difficult uh for us to you know know about nilgiri grass yellow till uh up the point when uh balakrishna verapil sir from uh, balapuram he gave us the insight of how a nilgiri grass yellow looks like and then we started looking at our images you know in the in our library and found that many of our images which we considered as one spot grass yellow actually were nilgiri grass yellow the difference in nilgiri grass yellow as i have mentioned in the slides here uh, first of all both of them look very similar very very similar but if you see i'll start an annotation here you see here you can see here in a uh, see it, i am so i am having the close wing because it is very difficult to have open wing saw uh, grass yellow so only live specimens and sometimes you know dead specimens will give you an open wing otherwise uh, you will rarely or never get an open wing so to photograph these butterflies we have to you know have sun in front of you and the uh, the that the, the, the wing inside of the wing that uh, the four wing on shade of the four wing when it comes to the you know on the hind wing that because of transparency or the translucency of the wings we'll be able to see this this area you see the difference in these two areas there are this is because of uh, the brown uh, the dark colored wing margin both of them from uh, underside in, from the four wing has got the dark the dark uh, apical uh, patch in this apical patch in space 2 and 3 there are space 2 and 3 i'm talking this circles are big for space 2 and 3 you can see the excavations here the space 2 and 3 almost equal in size whereas in in the three spot the, on this on this nilgiri grass yellow the space 2 is much more uh, excavated than space 3 so this is space 3 and this is space 2 so space 2 is much much more excavated than space 3 and it makes a particular angle which is not present in the one spot grass yellow and that is the difference between the two when you see them in the field uh, in the uh, you know riverine areas you will find them both in the same place sometimes so many of them would be one spot grass yellows i remember i photographed my <coughs> first one spot grass yellow from kerala rockwood area in uh, chandone wildlife sanctuary and i thought it to be uh, one spot grass yellow but later it came out to be a uh, nilgiri uh, grass yellow that's how we learned and thanks to the recent paper uh, by kalesh and dr kalesh and krishna may which uh, cleared all the doubts about uh, the nilgiri grass yellow and its identification i think it's clear here i'll uh, go to the next slide so there are two albatrosses found in uh, uh, western ghats one is common albatross and one is the lesser albatross or the sahyadri albatross i am not putting any field images here because it is very difficult to get a field image of a, a sahyadri albatross or the apis body exclusively it's very rarely you can get it because the males of the sahyadri albatross mud puddle along with the common albatrosses so one of them will be there <coughs> somewhere in between and then be crowded by <coughs> the common albatrosses and that will be very difficult for us to uh, find them and photograph them but there are uh, identification keys given uh, i'll show you the identification key here uh, that is for only for you know for if you have a specimen in hand uh, you know in the field if you see a uh, 
female type, uh, female uh, uh, common albatross uh, butt pudding. Uh, there are 90% chance of that to be a lesser albatross or a sayadri albatross rather than a <coughs> female common albatross. Because mostly the female common albatross do not butt pudding. That is my observation. But if you have seen female common albatrosses butt pudding, then uh, you are a better judge. So I will show you the difference here. I will again start my annotation. And you can see here, here, one second. No, no. I'll show you. This area, this area and this area here. You can see that uh, in uh, uh, the lesser albatross, the Sayadi albatross, it is not, not lesser albatross, you can call it a Sayadi, a Sayadi albatross. The distal edge, it is a, there are black spots here. These black spots make a perpendicular to the margin of the forewing. This is the margin of the forewing. This is the margin of the forewing. And this makes a kind of rectangular, perpendicular. This angle is perpendicular. This, 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 the string is uh, up to this point, up to this point. And uh, this makes a rectangular shape, and which is not the case with the common albatross female, which is uh, basal area is oblique and the angle is not a rectangular. This here, you can see that this is the, your, uh, the wing margin, and the angle which makes, which it makes, is not, which it is not the. One second, I'll do this. This angle is not. This angle is not proper. I'll uh, clear everything and again uh, draw it. You can see here, this angle and this angle is ob oblique. And here, if you draw this angle and this angle is perpendicular, that makes it a uh, lesser albatross. There is no other distinctive features. Both of them look the same. Uh, the apical area has four to five spots uh, in lesser albatross also. And as well, as well as in your common albatross female. So both of them look the same. So this is uh, academic purposes. If you go to the Western Guards, if you have a specimen in hand or try to uh, photograph them, you'll have this point in your mind that, okay, this uh, Sayadi albatross is also present along with the common albatross uh, mud puddling in the uh, summer months. I'll go to the next uh, screen. Uh, before that, I will clear the uh, annotations. Okay. Now, there are two puffins here. Uh, one is a plain puffin and one is a spot puffin. The plain puffins are at middle elevations and the spot puffins are at higher elevations. Mid means up to 500 meters, we'll get the uh, Sayadi plain puffins, but uh, about, uh, about 1000 uh, meters, we'll get the, uh, the spot puffins. The, dif the, the difference between the plain puffin and the spot puffin is the presence of a The presence of a spot at the end cell, end cell of the forming on the underside, there is spot in the spot puffin and there is no spot in the plain puffin. That's how these two are different. Otherwise, they look the same. If you are unable to get the uh, this spot, uh, you may not be able to distinguish between a plain puffin or a spot puffin in the field. So this is the difference between plain puffin and spot puffin. Again, I will clear the annotations and go to the next field. The common Jezebel and uh, the painted sawtooth. So this sometimes you get a lot of confusion about these two species. First of all, I let me tell you they are totally different. Uh, they may look, uh, you know, similar to a uh, novice, but these two are very different uh, butterfly insects. And uh, you can see the difference, which is very very. Uh, You see the difference here. This shape of the marginal spots of a common Jezebel and the shape of the marginal spots of a painted sawtooth. Totally different. One is having a conical structure, the other is having a rectangular structure. That is the main difference between the wing 
and the, the, the difference between the identification features of the Indian Jezebel and the painted sawtooth. And of course, painted sawtooth is have only found in the river and areas near the streams of Western Ghats, and the Indian Jezebel is found everywhere. And you also you can see the cell area. The cell area of uh, Indian Jezebel is plain. There is no markings here, but in your in your uh, painted sawtooth, they are having markings in the cell. So that makes the difference between these two species, the Indian Jezebel and the painted sawtooth. So with this, I go to the next slide. Before I go to the next slide, I clear the drawings. Uh, the next slide. Okay, and now uh, with this, I uh, come to the end of the pirates. Uh, the emigrants, you know, the model and the common emigrants, the difference are very, very common. So I'm not going to discuss about the common species. Uh, we have, we see every day this common emigrant and the model emigrants. You know the differences. So the next one I'm going to talk about is the nymphalites is the largest family with 103 species. I may not be able to cover everything, but I'll take some very interesting species in uh, among the nymphalites. Okay. Now the basic identification feature includes uh, both the sexes have their four legs reduced like hairy brush. That's why they are called brush footed. Except for the beaks, except for the beaks, all other nymphalites, both the sexes have their four legs reduced, reduced like hairy brush. And they are all false legs. That's why we may often see these nymphalites sitting with four legs, not six legs. And uh, the pupa usually doesn't have a silk griddle and hangs on the anal hook. The butterflies feed on some of the butterflies. Nymphalites feed on animal droppings, carcasses of you know uh, fish, uh, crabs, and flesh, and overripe fruits. And most of them are powerful flyers. These are the basic features of a nymphalid. The next slide. So this the first slide, which is uh, very interesting for uh, newcomers. The plain tiger and the denied egg fly female. The plain tiger is the model, and the denied egg fly female is the uh, Batesian mimic of this model. So you can see the difference between the two. First difference which is very prominent is the wing margin. You can see the wing margin. The marginal spot which is a kind of having two spots here and here we are having three spots. So if I can move this. Okay. There are spots and there are four spots here. This margin is having totally different and it's a wavy margin for uh, denadefine female and which is a kind of smooth margin for the plain tiger. Secondly, there are three spots available over the cell. In case of, uh, this, this, this extra spot is the, uh, the male indicator, only males are having this extra spot. Uh, okay, one second. Undo, undo, undo. Why this? Clear this, clear this. Okay. Mostly. Okay. Now I'll show you again. You can see these three spots in the case of uh, uh, plain tiger, and only one spot in the case of a, a dynamic female. Of course, there is another spot here in the case of dynamic fly female, which is not present in, which is not present in the uh, plain tiger. And uh, uh, this is the difference between your uh, uh, dynamic fly female. The wing margins, most most important. It is wavy, curvy, with you know very very geometrical shapes here. I uh, mean, uh, you know. Every uh, you know uh, every space is having a kind of one two three four spots. Whereas in case of a plain tiger, there are only two spots. That's the difference, main difference between a plain tiger and a denadefine fly female. Go to the next slide. The common crow and the double banded crow. Very interesting. We often see them. This migration season is going on in Western Ghats and almost ending. So we have got common crows and uh, double banded crows everywhere. Uh, I'll show you the difference between the two. Uh, now there is a distinctive difference in the uh, 
uh, open wing when you see them the two brands in double banded pro which is not present in common pro i am not uh, uh, going to talk about the two brands since we don't see the brands often we see only the hind wing and the close wing posture the difference is very very prominent in this case see this area and this area in case of double branded crow the upper post discal band is complete whereas it is absent in the case of common crow common crow has got these two spots these spots are present in common crow but these three spots are these three spots are not present this is not present this is not present and this is not present these three spots are not present in uh, your double banded crow both of them have a cell spot this cell spot is there which is uh, not present in a uh, brown pink crow i have not included brown pink crow just for your uh, knowledge this brown pink crow, crow uh, doesn't have a cell spot uh, which is present in both double branded crow and the common crow this difference uh, is very very uh, is, uh, you know particular and very significant and easily you can identify between the uh, two species by just looking at the uh, hind wing and we don't need a specimen in hand or a open wing shot for both of them clear one go to the next slide now the common crow uh, sorry blue tiger and the dark blue tiger these are also you know uh, pretty uh, you know uh, pretty pretty confusing species when you see in the field but nothing to worry these two are also very very uh, distinctive uh, species and you can easily find them uh, you know difference between the two the difference is you see here here lies the difference here lies the difference the main difference which don't need to no need to see any other place this fork is very narrow this v is very narrow in case of uh, blue tiger and it is wide apart in case of in case of dark blue tiger if you can see these two differences it is very clear for you to uh, distinguish between the two no no need to see any other area just see those two places and you will find the difference between the two butterflies very simple of course when you see in the flight the blue tiger is more whitish in nature and the dark blue tiger has got more blue on the spots the bluish spots and the blue tiger is having a whitish spot that is the difference between the two species when you see them in flight otherwise when they are sitting it is very easy to find them difference by seeing at this the structures i'll go to the next slide common nawab and anomalous nawab again these two species uh, sometimes coexist in bangalore so especially they are found uh, in the same place you know uh, common nawab and uh, anomalous nawab the difference uh, is uh, uh, very prominent and uh, don't look at the colors here because colors are confusing because of the sunlight and the flash and no flash the colors may change Uh, but you have to see only the apex, and I will show the difference between the two. In the apex of a common nava, there may be one spot or absent of a white spot. There may be white spot present, but or the white spot may be absent. That is the common nava, or the Indian not common nava. It is now called Indian nava because common nava is not found in India, and in anomalous nava we have you can see almost always there will be two spots there will be two spots in case of anomalous nava in case of common nava there will be one spot or no spot but in both the cases spot base will be there there is a black line you can see one line will be here in case of a uh, common nava and in case of anomalous nava there will be two lines there are two lines here can you see one line and these two lines these two lines sometimes the spots become very feeble because of the aging of the specimen uh, still you can make out by looking at the black streaks here these there are two streaks in case of anomalous nava and one streak in case of common nava 
That is the difference between anomalous nawab and common nawab. Otherwise, both the species look almost the same. Size wise, behavior wise, you know, they breed on almost the same, uh, same plant and you know, caterpillars also look almost the same. Next. Now I come to the rings. The rings, I have got four rings, five rings and three. So there are two four rings here. One is called the common four ring and second one is called the white four ring. And in places like, you know, the western, uh, the eastern part of the western guards, uh, the drier areas will find this white four ring. It is very easy to distinguish a white four ring by looking at the base of the hind wing. When it open, it's white. In case of white four ring, most of you might have seen this. But when you look at the uh, hind wing, you may see that uh, in, uh, first of all, let me generalize uh, the between this, all the three rings. This common the four ring, common five ring, and common three ring. Let me talk about the uh, other other three things. See, in uh, rings, we don't at all consider the ring present in the four ring. This is never to be considered for counting the number of rings. Okay, never consider this ring. We have to consider the rings present only in the hind wing. In a common four ring there will always be one ring which is present near the near the uh, apex of the hind wing very close to the apex of the hind wing one ring and there will be three collinear rings at the separate from the fourth one this is how this four ring behaves always it is like this there will be three rings plus one always in five ring it will always be six rings. Now, I'm not talking about aberrations. There may be aberrations. You can see this in the pair of two. This is one pair. This is another pair. And this is the third pair. So there are six rings present in a five ring. Uh, but how, how it's not called a six ring, common six ring. It is called a common five ring. So these are uh, five, uh, the six, uh, the three pairs of rings. and their orientation is a bit, uh, you know, bit, uh, uh, you know, a bit significant about the species identification. I'll come to that shortly. And the three ring, it it is having one ring at the top, very small ring, and two rings at the bottom. So this is how, this is how the common four ring, common five ring, and the common three ring looks like. Okay. So sometimes in the dry season form. You may not be able to see the rings also. The rings are so feeble that it's very difficult to see them. How to identify? Because this three ring is a dry area species. It in Kerala, it is found in the always in the eastern parts, the Tamil Nadu. In Bangalore, also it is found at the you know, eastern sides of the Bangalore, so the, this area. And it's very, it's very, it's it's a rocky butterfly. It's uh, mainly perching on the rocks. Uh, this common three ring, whereas this common five ring is mostly found uh, in the uh, forested areas and the river and areas and uh, in evergreen forests also it is found and common four ring is found everywhere common four rings every it is found everywhere and it's pretty common in most of the places you might have seen it now i'll come to the uh, the rings which are uh, similar to these uh, but they are not the same so i'll clear this uh, annotation drawings and come to this now when you have to distinguish between a uh, baby five ring and a common five ring. There is something uh, Aptima tabella and Aptima uh, this uh, your uh, common uh, five ring Aptima Veldus. Veldus. Okay. See the I have drawn a line here. This line, if you from these two. Uh, spots, if you draw a straight line, you will just touch the hind wing, the last wing. You will touch the last ring in the hind wing. Whereas in case of the baby five ring, if you draw a straight line, it will go straight and it will not touch anywhere. Okay, you can see I have already drawn it and it is not touching the ring. So that's the orientation of these rings which makes them so different. Uh, from each other, the common five ring and the baby five ring. 
this uh, white four ring which is very similar to the similar to your common four ring but it is uh, the wing is having more white uh, you know coloration than uh, the common four ring it is whitish pretty pretty whitish you can see open wing has got uh, better features uh, but the closing sometimes you know this uh, common four ring also shows some white scales but they are not prominent but in case of white four ring it is very prominent in case of these two there is a lesser three ring aptima ivica and the common of uh, a three ring this spot is very small and this spot is very large that makes them difference between of course uh, they are not found in the same locality often Uh, no, uh, it is more towards the northern part of uh, lesser thring is northern part of the western ghats, uh, including Madhya Pradesh. It is found there very commonly. Even Punjab, it is found. I have seen it. So this lesser thring, uh, maybe Gujarat, it is found. It is found. Uh, it is uh, Satara. Our Milan Bhagavad Gita has uh, photographed in Satara in the northern part of the western ghats. The rings are very. Uh, the the top ring oscillates. This oscillates much larger, and it is always found small in the case of common thring. That's the difference between the rings which are commonly found around you. These are not common white four ring, side three baby five ring, and lesser three ring. But these three are uh, often encountered by photographers. Now I come to the next slide. I am clearing all the mouse and go to the next slide. This is two. There are two uh, no uh, very uncommon rings, four rings found in Western Ghats. They are both are uh, high altitude uh, butterflies. Uh, these rings, one is the uh, Palani four ring, and what is the Nilgiri four ring? The difference between the two, there is not much difference as such. Uh, you know, when you see them in the same locality, it will be very difficult for you to identify. Uh, there are, you know, Dr. Kalesh taught me some uh, ideas to distinguish between the two. Uh, first of all, look whether they are sitting. If it is sitting on a leaf. Possibility is it is a palni four ring. If it is sitting on a rock, possibility is that it is a nilgiri four ring. That's how uh, you know experts and observations have been done by citizen scientists and scientists over a period of decades, and they have found out the how they perch. The perching also is different. The palni four ring always perches on the leaves, and the nilgiri four ring uh, perches on uh, in your in your uh, on rocks. And the difference is these oscillates in the hind wing. These oscillates in the hind wing. Sorry, the oscillates in the hind wing. The yellow crowns are very small for Palani four ring, and the yellow crowns are very prominent for Nilgiri four ring. That is the only difference between the two. Otherwise, there is no difference between a Palani four ring and a because there are marginal cases when they both look same. But the difference, how to differentiate between the two, is by looking at the 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 yellow crowns of the oscillates. The thinner yellow crown makes it a palni four ring, and the thicker yellow crown makes it a nilgiri uh, four ring. Otherwise, you know, sometimes marginal cases. It's also we also debate sometimes. Often I have debate. I have also debated uh, with people uh, between the difference between the two, whether it's a palni four ring or nilgiri four ring, and these sorts of things happen. Uh, I will clear this. Go to the next slide. The tree browns. We have got the dakan common tree brown, the dakan bamboo tree brown, and the dakan two white tree brown or the Tamil tree brown. This is the Tamil tree brown. Now look at these three tree browns. The distinction. Uh, the first of all, Tamil tree brown. I'll come. These two oscillates. These oscillate the hind wing, and these oscillate are of same size, almost same size in case of. Tamil tree brown. That's how we distinguish Tamil tree brown from the other tree, two tree browns. First, first difference. Second difference: the presence of this white band on the four wing, the that discal area. You see this white band, which is not the case in other two species. There are there's a combination of bands here, and here also there's a combination of bands. So that's how we differentiate between uh, uh, the bamboo tree brown 
and the uh, you know and the common tree brown and the and the tamil tea brown the tamil tea brown is a very dark in the i've seen a light specimen here but when you see in the field there are very dark very dark brown deep brown and lot of bluish sheen is purple sheen on the wings i have seen those specimens very fresh specimens and others uh, very you know you see uh, the ocellus here this is also different you know when you see this uh, tea brown here and the tree uh, there is a tree brown here this this ocellus also are different so this is how uh, we differentiate between the browns when you see in the field you will be able to understand next the sailors most uh, wicked uh, fellows i am coming with nephilites identification of sailors you know i'll try to make it simple uh, first i have got three sailors which are commonly find and uh, found and encountered by people in the plains and you know we do not go into the western ghats to find them no uh, we will find them in bangalore and you know marginal areas you know, many places in including madhya pradesh we will find all the three in same place at the same time the difference i'll show you in common sailor when you see an open wing the line is going towards the apex of the wing this way it is not touching these two this is not touching these two these two uh okay these two spots are not touched but in case of chestnut streak sailor and short banded sailor you see when you just pass a, a straight line from the center of these two uh, spots it will cross the third spot and here also you can see the same thing same case this is one difference so that makes it common sailor different from chestnut six sailor and the short banded sailor now how to differentiate it between uh, short banded sailor and the uh, and the chestnut six sailor by by looking at the open wing shot you see the one second i will take a different drawing point of the curve you see here this part and here this part in the short banded sailor which has got a similar pattern as we see in the common sailor this area this is very similar to common sailor in short banded sailor but you know the difference the difference is the this line which joins uh, this spot this this imaginary line and in short banded sailor uh, in sorry in chestnut sea it's a thin it's totally different there are two layers of marginal spots one is marginal band and this uh, uh, this uh, this we can say that uh, uh, post discal band kind of thing in the hind wing we can find this very thin line of uh, you know inverted c's in in case of you can say in layman's uh, you know in layman's language inverted uh, inverted uh, moons you know new moons uh, thin moons and uh, this is this this is a different uh, 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 the size and shape which is a very squarish and very prominent uh, rectangular uh, spots in case of short banded sailor and common sailor that's how we differentiate between is common sailor and the short banded sailor and the chestnut sea sailor by looking at these three areas first area the other two areas first is area looking at the this this band second in all, all the three second is uh, the second looking at the marginal bands and the post discal band that is very different and specific in case of all the three species it makes the three species distinctive uh, and uh, in this uh, short banded sailor is not very common in the southern western ghats it is uh, more common to the northern part of the western ghats next slide there are two sailors uh which are look very similar which look very similar but two different sailors you know one is called the sayer the clear sailor and one all the common sailor i am taking the example of common sailor because when you see the uh, the open wing they almost look the same 
they almost look the same of course there are differences i don't say that there are there are no differences but those differences are very uh, very very uh, peculiar type this see this difference here and see this different spots here okay this is one difference second difference if you see the most important difference is looking at the hind wing in hind wing in common sailor it is orange and in clear sailor this is brown that's the difference that means when you see a, a common sailor which is dark in color little bigger than uh, what you actually see in the field in the western guards you try to take the oh, the close wing shot of the butterfly and you will see if this is orange in color it is common sailor if it is not orange in color it is a clear sailor that's the difference between the two they look the same almost the same but i have given you some in pointers you can find these pointers and try to find them in the field whether of course this marginal band is very prominent in common sailor which is not very prominent in clear sailor of course there are others other sailors in uh, western guards uh, there is that palenis sailor sailor i'm not talking about those they are very difficult different and uh, very specific sailors found in very localized zones now i come to lycenids quickly i'll finish lycenids are very big uh, and 102 species in the western guards i'll try to you know switch from this slide to another slide and show you lycenids i don't want to uh, no uh, because this is the place where uh, i took our two hours uh, uh, no session with only blues i'll not take the whole uh, thing here i'll try to discuss about some blues and uh, uh, no uh, these blues are small and medium in size underside is usually dull colored white and brown and uh, upper side brilliant blue green orange violet there are various colors especially in the males i am doing with tails most of the species some of this then doesn't have a tail caterpillars uh, no, show a symbiosis with ants most of the blues have uh, symbiosis with ants the first slide i am taking uh, deliberately uh, is the tarucus species tarucus are the uh, weak peros these peros we have got uh, uh, eight species in our country you know out of that in western guards we find um, 1 2 3 4 5 of them five of them we find here uh, uh, two are found in the western himalayas and one is found in the eastern himalayas so this uh, tarugas so we have got uh, always we see a tarugas we say it's a it's a rounded pair that's the main thing we hear it's a rounded pair the the common uh, terminology comes a rounded pair but not all pairs are rounded pairs i'll shortly show you how to differentiate between the pairs now on uh, the rounded pair this is the central one is a rounded pair you see the these three spots this spot is very close to this spot next spot and it is separate from the that is 5 6 and 7 space 5 6 and 7 the spot number 5 is loaded to uh, sorry for spot number 6 is closer to spot number 7 and uh, it is uh, uh, four five six or five six. i think it's uh, five six seven only and this is uh, it is a bit separate this is separate this is how and this is oh, how we differentiate between a uh, rounded pair from other pairs again i will clear it and try to draw it in a better better way you see this spot is closer to this spot but separated and this is much more further away from the from the trio this three this is uh, the spot this is the spot and this is the spot and when you see a uh, spotted pero these three spots are all equidistant these three are equidistant and in case of the the little tiger pero this spot is always touching the touching this uh, spot at seven This is six. The spot seven is touching that uh, is touched by spot six. And also, you see, I have drawn two imaginary lines here. These two spots uh, are collinear, and these two spots are collinear. This is the difference. This is how we identify. And also, if I see that this 
spot is basically curved inside which is not the case in nara nara it is not inside it is uh, it is the curve is not very steep it is a smooth curve and it it is doesn't drop 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 down but in case of balkanicus it drops down and in case of calera which is the easiest to distinguish the the post discal band in the hind wing is broken into spots the post discal band in the hind wing is broken into spots that's how we distinguish between these three again i am telling you that this spot is closer to this and separated from this these three spots are at same line and here you can see these two spots and these two spots may come in the same line of course if you see the uh, open wing there are multiple spots on balkanicus there is a one end cell spot uh, at uh, in the case of nara and there are multiple spots in the case of balkanicus and in calera also one spot similar to nara but there is no spot at the tail the base in case of nara there is a spot at the junction of the tail that's how we differentiate between nara uh, calera and balkanicus i don't have a photograph of indica otherwise i have shown you i'll at the end of the slide if you have question on indica i can tell you and i can show you difference between other erucas also if you have questions now i go to the next slide there are oak blues okay uh oak blues in western ghats you have got uh, uh the rarest of the oak blue in western ghats possibilities uh, no nowhere recorded till now from any anywhere in the uh, kerala or karnataka or abita uh, there is no sign of this indian oak blue the reasons are not known that we need uh, some more pair of good eyes to locate it somewhere in the western ghats it has not yet been properly reported or and there will be old literature i have no idea whether it is reported or not the most common oak blue in the western ghats is this large oak blue which is very similar to the uh okay which is very similar to the western central oak blue this western central oak blue both of them coexist in western ghat in same place the difference between the two you can see that the in in western central oak blue this the white streaks are very prominent which is not very prominent in the large oak blue large oak blue is probably one of the largest uh, butterflies found in western ghats along with your uh, sunbeams and you know uh, maybe the leaf blooms okay and the, there is another butterfly which is uh, very similar to the indian oak blue but found in the western ghat is this rosy oak blue which looks very close to the indian oak blue but if you see it closely uh, it is uh, bigger than uh, larger in size than the indian oak blue and they never coexist together so you go to western ghats in the river and areas you will find rosy oak blue but you will never find an indian oak blue uh, and this a uh, very specific oak blue this uh, aberrant oak blue which is very distinctive and this we have got this uh, uh, this tamil oak blue which is also very different and very distinctive and there is one more oak blue which is found called the many tail oak blue i have not included the photograph here there is no space so i could not include the photograph so there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 oak blues found in western ghats i don't say 7 i say 6 because indian oak blue is still a mystery we don't know whether it is found in found there or not so other oak blues are quite you know uh, different from each other it's not a difficult to it is not difficult to distinguish between them only it would distinguish between the uh, this uh, central oak blue and uh, the large oak blue oh the silver lines you know silver lines there are two silver lines which uh, makes uh, the whole situation very very uh tricky and dicey one is this common silver line and other one is the plumbio silver line i think i have not included any plumbio yeah i have included a open wing of the plumbio silver line here there is no difference whatsoever in a 
common silver line and the Columbia silver line, if you see the close wing shot, no way you can find the difference. The only difference you can find is when you find the open wing and there is a blue sheen or blue patch in the hind wing for a Columbia silver line, which is not present in a common silver line. That is how we distinguish between a common silver line and a Columbia silver line. There is no way, no AI can find out the difference between a common silver line and a, and a Columbia silver line when you see the, the close wing. Similar is the case with this common short silver line here on my right and its twin, the scare short silver line. The close wing short of common short silver line and scare short silver line almost same. It is very difficult to distinguish them in the field. The only way to distinguish between the two is to see the open wing of male or a female. In the male, this orange patch in the apical area is very prominent and big and which is very, very reduced in the case of a scare short silver line. You can see here, this blue is more prominent and it is uh, it is reaching beyond 2B and uh, that's why uh, this spots in a, a scare short silver line is very small on the four wing as compared to the common short silver line. Now you may ask me uh, the difference between a common short silver line and a long binary silver line. If I can increase the slide size, Okay, I'll just stop the error, clear the annotation. I'll try to increase. It's not increasing. Now you can see here, in case of uh, long banded silver line, there is a spot here. Oh, it is too, it is too, I'll make it very line. Here, the, the, this particular line, this spot, this spot, it, it tends to touch the base of the wing. These two bands, it is going to tend to touch. Whereas in case of common short silver line, this is a spot, which is not elongating towards the, towards the base of the wing. It is not going to the base of the wing. And this is always separated from the other two spots. This is always separated from other two spots. Whereas in case of in case of your uh, uh, long buried silver line, these three spots are touching each other and the third spot is elongated and tends to reach the, reach the base of the wing. Okay, that's how we differentiate between your long buried silver line and a common silver. Of course, there are other, other differentiating features. You'll, when you go in the field and start photographing them, you will be able to find them. There is a V in case of uh, common silver line that, that is long banded silver line, which is very prominent V in the four wing. And this V is a broken V in case of uh, your uh, common short silver line and scare short silver line. There is no V present in the case of common silver line and Columbia silver line. Okay. And there are other silver lines uh, in Western Guard, this abnormal silver line, which is quite, quite different, and lilac silver line, which is quite different. I am not discussing those two. The royals. I am only talking about three very similar looking royals. There are other royals found in Western Guards which are very distinctive in nature and we can easily identify them. So, first is Peacock Royal, second is Plains Blue Royal, and third is the White Tufted Royal. How to distinguish the two between the two, between the three? Of course, the open wings are very distinctive, very, their features are very quite prominent, so you can uh, distinguish them. But when you see a specimen uh, in the field, which will generally not give you an open wing shot. You see the eyes first. Black eyes makes it peacock royal. Gray eyes makes it a plains blue royal. Brown eyes makes it a white tufted royal. Second difference, the white tufted royal has got very prominent white, very bright colored white. Okay, peacock royal is some white, somewhat a uh, milky in nature, but not as white as a white tufted royal. And this 
the guy in between the plains blue royal which is smaller than both of the two it is smaller than peacock royal as well as a white tufted royal and it is having a paler white more grayish uh, tint in the wing than the uh, other two okay that makes a difference and also if you want to see the difference in uh, your uh, this plains blue royal in between the two lobes in this between this uh, there is a bluish patch here there is a bluish patch which is not that prominent in case of peacock royal it is not prominent but you need, you need not watch them and uh, you see that color of the eyes and quickly you can find out which royal is that okay that's how the difference between between royals of course the key features are uh, you know given in books are quite different these are observations in the field which uh, made us to uh, come to the conclusion that these are also the differences i differences are not mentioned in any literature the royals and uh, uh, of course there are other blues for that i will switch over to my next slide i am uh, clearing drawings here i am going to switch over Okay. okay, it's 8.30, you might have to make it a bit faster also. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Keep going. I'll try to make it faster. Uh, the, red, uh, the red flash it's is... Yeah, but it, yeah, please. Red flash is having a red body. The female, male and the female. Both are having red bodies. The male, uh, in the male red flash, uh, the margin is more prominent than that in the case of a female red flash. But both are red in color. The, the margin that, that those veins are more prominent in the male and less prominent in the female. And when you see the underwing, when you see the male of both red flash and the red flash, you will find that it is more pointed apex in uh, case of a red flash and the cilia is red. The easiest way to identify is the cilia of this red flash is red in color. The cilia is red and the cilia is not red in case of a slate flash. Of course, often you find that this band the post distal band is thinner in case of uh, red flash and is a bit thicker in case of slate flash in both the cases uh, this band end cell never touches this post distal band in both the cases cases the band end cell never touches the post distal band of course there are other flashes the indigo flash and the and the, uh, that malabar flash i'll talk about that in the next slide This in the cornelian and indigo flash. These are also very uh, confusing species. Uh, when you see the cornelian and the indigo flash in the field, you will find say that okay, it is an indigo flash, but it could be a cornelian. When you see the close wing, you will always find that post discal band of a cornelian is broken. This is broken, and in case of indigo flash, this is a continuous post discal band in the hind wing. Otherwise, the fore wing are same and uh, in, in the indigo flash and the red flash uh, sorry indigo flash and the cornelian the band end cell is quite separated from the post distal band this the distance is more and in case of cornelian the distance is less of course there are the differences uh, about uh, between the uh, uh, other flashes red flash and the and the straight flash that this band end cell always touches the uh, touches the post distal band in case of uh, indigo flash and one more difference between red flash and the cornelian is this cell is very dark brown in case of cornelian and it does, there is the, it is of red color in the case of uh, red flash that's the difference between uh, the open wing shot of a cornelian and the red flash Now the gua blues. We've got two gua blues here. One is the large gua blue, and one is the uh, that Indian gua blue, common gua blue. You can say the difference with the two is very very uh, uh, prominent. The large gua blue has got a spot here, which is not present in the case of a common gua blue. Of course, sometimes you may uh, distinguish, uh, find it uh, uh, like a cornelian. You may find an Indian gua blue, common gua blue, and make it as a cornelian. The difference is uh, this is a brown eyes for uh, a gua blue, and uh, in case of uh, you know uh, you know you know cornelian, it is black eyes. That's how we differentiate between the two in the field. 
okay this is about the goa blues they also you know this two goa blues they appear in the same place the breed on fruits goa and you know you know pomegranate uh, fruits go to the next slide the uh, sunbeams that the three sunbeams found in western ghats the indian sunbeam the shiva sunbeam and the angled or acute or the tooth sunbeam when you see the indian sunbeam you find that it is having no 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 uh, markings on the uh, hind wing there are no markings the the close wing doesn't have any markings in the case of uh, the indian sunbeam it is milky white in color and the color varies in the case of shiva sunbeam but there is a discal band which uh, the rather both discal band which goes from the apex of the wing and up to the tail it it carries on this band you can see this band is very prominent and it goes up to the uh, base of the hind wing sometimes it is broken here in case of angled sunbeam the how to differentiate between uh, the two is the band is very light feeble and there is a not a visible uh, but it is a present band and cell uh, is collinear with the extension of the post distal band in case of angle sir always when you go to northeast the cuties bullis or the uh, bright sun mean this is how to differentiate between the two is basically when you have this band and cell and this uh, uh, this uh, extension of the post distal band they are collinear in the same line in the case of angle sunbeam and it is separated in other sunbeam the bullis it is this line this particular portion is separate it is pushed above not like and of course in angle sunbeam we have the tooth here on the fore wing you can see the tooth here which is not present in shiva sunbeam and in indian sunbeam the, the female the male is having uh, the red is predominant on the wing whereas in other two sunbeam the red is not predominant the brown is more uh, prominent in other two sunbeam that is the difference between the sunbeams which are which are found in the western ghats the hedge blues uh, the hedge blues are also sometimes very uh, confusing the difference between common hedge blue and the malabar hedge blue or the lilac hedge blue this is the difference first is these three spots make the symbol of division yes know the dividend symbol is the dividend symbol or percentage symbol the symbol which is very prominent in case of common hedge blue in case of your uh, uh, lilac hedge blue this is not the case and these three spots are very collinear in nature they, are, they form a curve thus these three spots form a curve which is not the case in common hedge blue the other hedge blues which is the uh, the white disc hedge blue the plain hedge blue and the and the uh, that uh, white hedge blue which are also found in western ghats this 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 particular spot which is found in malabar hedge blue and the uh, and the uh, common hedge blue which is not present in other two hedge blues other hedge blue this is the this spot is missing this spot is missing we can see all the hedge blues this spot is missing so uh that makes the this this these two white hedge blue and white disc hedge blue are high altitude butterflies in the western ghats and plain hedge blue is a middle elevation butterfly it is found in uh, elevation 500 to 900 meters and in the case of plain hedge blue this uh, markings are very very uh, prominent and very this post discal band is very uh, smooth and streamlined white disc uh, white hedge blue has got uh, spots at the very uh, minute spots at the margins of the wing which is not the case in other hedge blues in white uh, disc hedge blue this pattern is very prominent there is a staircase pattern is there in the in the hind wing there is absence of this spot and the staircase pattern makes it white disc hedge blue and not a common hedge blue that's how we differentiate between a common hedge blue and a white disc hedge blue this stair this pattern in the post distal band and absence of a spot at the base of the wing that makes it different these are the hedge blues uh, which are found apart from that malayan is also found which is uh, not uh, having a uh, tail in western ghats and the difference is 
the presence of the spots in the margin, which looks similar to the HGUs, but it is smaller than all the HGUs. This uh, Malayan is a very small butterfly. I think I have uh, completed my blues. This is huh, bubble blues, yeah. You know, see, the, the bubble, bubble blues are also very confusing sometimes. The bright bubble blue has got two spots here. The African bubble blue doesn't have any spot here. Okay. And the double, double bubble, bubble blue has colored one or uh, two spots, but very, very, very minute spots, very negligible spots. This dull bubble blue is a dry area species. And uh, this, this spots, all the spots in the wings are very, uh, very, very uh, negligible in nature. They're very minute, not prominent as your uh, bright bubble blue. Because the dull bubble blue resembles more close to a bright bubble blue than the Syrian or the African bubble blue. Of course, there are other differences in the bubble blues. This area is different uh, from uh, your uh, uh, bright bubble blue. The presence of a spot in uh, your African or Syrian bubble blue, which is not present in this bright bubble blue and, and the dull bubble blue. These bubble blues are very small butterflies and they are found in uh, moist deciduous to deciduous forests and even in dry areas. The ground blue, the forget me nots, and cupids. So I'll talk, talk about the forget me not and the ground blue. How to distinguish a ground blue? Very simple. The tonal spots are orange colored and very prominent to tonal spots. First difference in a ground blue. Second, this spot is shifted from the post discal band. Second difference is this spot is shifted from the post discal band. In forget me not, there's a presence of a spot at the coaster in all the forget me nots and the shape of C here. You can see a shape of C here, which is not present in other uh, similar insects. This is the difference between uh, your uh, forget me not and ground blue. Of course, in silver forget me not, which is also found in Western Guards, this spot is very close to the discal band, the post discal band. It is almost touching the post discal band. Recently, we have photographed uh, the uh, silver forget me not from the dry regions of uh, the western part, the eastern part of the Western Guards in, in uh, Chinar Valley, actually. And we go to the next slide. Okay, uh, the ground blue and the pea blues, the open wing, especially females, they look very same, very similar. You see the difference uh, between the two. I'll show you the difference between the two in uh, uh, the pea blue. This spot is. I'll just take the. This spot is uh, makes a uh, different than this this spots here. These are kind of uh, actually beaten spots. These are not circular in nature. They are basically oval in nature. But in case of pea blue, they are they are very prominently circular in nature, round and circular. That's how it made the difference is created between pea blue and your uh, uh, ground blue. Especially, especially females, when you see in the field, the females look almost the same for pea blue and ground blue. And plains cupid, small cupid, and lime blues. Okay, so the plains cupid, the small cupid, first of all, there are, uh, you know, why is this battery running low? It shows battery is running low. It's connected. Okay. In the plain cupid, in the small cupid, you see these spots are of same size, dark orange color, crowns are there on the spots. And this spot is not as ground blue, it is separated. This is not separated. In 
plains cupid you'll find the two spots are there but the second spot near the base of the wing is much minute and smaller than the first spot the upper spot uh, is much larger than the lower spot and second difference is the presence of a spot fourth spot there are four spots here in case of small cupid there are only three spots in this area there are three spots and this area there are four spots in case of in case of your uh, plain cupid and uh, in the lime blue which is doesn't have a tail lime blue doesn't have a tail and lime blue has broken spots on the forewing the spots are broken in case of plain cupid the spots are continuous as like a band but the, the presence of four spots in lime blue is same as the presence of four spots in case of your plain cupid that is the difference between lime blue a uh, plain cupid and small cupid next time you go to the field you see that the hind wing spots the spots at the base the neither tail two spots same size and there uh, and uh, and the three spots here and the, this is not shifted out it makes it a makes it a, uh, a small cupid the dry area species they are they breed on acacia uh, trees and uh, plain cupid breeds on breeds on mainly cycas so it is a city butterfly lime blue is also city butterfly next slide i'll go quickly ah uh, these are very common pero uh, angle pero and banded blue pero the difference in uh, uh, that angle pero and the banded blue pero is very prominent this presence of a this continuous band in uh, bound banded blue pero which is not the case with angle pero that's the difference between uh, the banded blue pero and the main difference between banded blue pero and the common pero otherwise the spots are almost same uh, the spots are much larger and wider in case of banded blue pero uh, which is not the case with uh, angle pero the common pero is quite uh, common and every time we see it in the in a, around us and uh, we see that this area is very uh, it's a, like a road between the spots the road goes in case of uh, corn pero in the case of dark pero which is uh, shown at the bottom in set here that there are four spots here one two three four four these are actually western guard species and uh, this angle uh, this um, uh, dark pero is very similar to corn pero the difference is in the arrangement of the spots in the unh underside of the hindwing that there is the, there are four spots equidistant spots makes it a triangle kind of triangle but there is no such arrangement in the case of common pero i'll go to the next i'll go to the next slide i got taking time okay common cerulean dark cerulean and uh, and uh, and metallic cerulean common cerulean this band is continuous the post distal band is continuous not broken in case of dark cerulean this is broken curve and it is uh, it is palish white in color in metallic cerulean it is similar but it's a large insect larger than dark cerulean and uh, it is also uh, having more white spots the, the, the spots and the bands are much whiter than the case of a dark cerulean dark cerulean is smaller butterfly and the uh, uh, metallic cerulean is a larger butterfly and in both metallic and dark uh, uh, the band uh, the post distal band is curved and broken in case of common cerulean it is it is straight and uh, uh, when you see the open wing it is uh, uh, light blue in color uh, for metallic cerulean and this dark cerulean is of course uh, vivid blue and the deep blue colors uh, present in the wings of the dark cerulean now lime blues that uh, the common lime blue that uh, that and the uh, and the uh, tailless lime blue common lime blue of course has a line tail and uh, tailless lime blue doesn't have a tail both the lime blues the the crown that black spots or the tonal spots are having uh, yellow uh, crowns and uh, the crowns are uh, are visible and uh, not in this species but in this particular photograph but uh, they are visible and the base of the wing is having lot of uh, uh, black hair uh, it is all hairy hairy wings are there in case of common line blue and tailless type blue there is other line blue called white tip line blue 
where the tip is white and uh, the crowns are not uh, orange, uh, the, the spots are not orange crown and this band and uh, this never goes beyond the cell, never goes beyond the cell towards this side, it will not go. And but in the case of other line blues, this, this band is continuous and goes beyond the cell. And you can see all the line blues, it goes beyond the cell, it goes beyond the cell, but in the case of white tip line blue, it doesn't go beyond the cell. There is another line blue called dinghy line blue, which I have not included here. In the dinghy line blue, the, the spots are there are two spots at the base of the wing, which are separated from each other, very minute, tiny spots uh, for the dinghy line blue. I am not taking many line, many uh, species because it is not possible to uh, take. Uh, okay, the grass blues, which are very, uh, very, very common around us, the pale grass blue, the difference is very, very prominent. You can see that there is a the, the spots here. I'll take, sorry, I'll take this brush. This spots here make a curve. There's a curve here, and in dark grass blue, there's a straight line. There's a straight line in the dark glass blue and there's a curve here in the case of pale glass blue. This is how easily we can find out the difference between the pale glass blue and the dark glass blue in the field. Dark glass blue is always a smaller butterfly and the pale glass blue is always a larger insect in general. The lesser glass blue, these two spots are shifted out always. These two spots are shifted out from the post discal band. You can easily find out. In tiny glass blue, the smallest of the all, all the all the three all the four rather, there is a small curve C here at the top of the wing. Easily you can find out uh, all the grass blues doesn't have a tail. I go to the next slide. Next slide, I think uh, we have covered all the slides here. So I have covered the blues uh, to my uh, knowledge. Uh, okay. Then I come to the next, uh, the Hesperidae. Uh, Hesperidae is the most difficult uh, area of identification and even for experts it's sometimes very difficult to identify by looking at images. In most of the cases we need a specimen in hand and look in the under microscope and do some genital decision to identify. But many of the skippers still are very prominent and easily uh, identifiable by looking at it. So if the, there are uh, skippers due to their uh, rapid flight patterns, the thick hairy body, extra dome shape, Larva prepares a shield of leaves called cell around them. Every species has a characteristic uh, cell. Uh, the proboscis is large and they are further divided into various other uh, areas, all solids, all kings, flats and angles. Uh, you know, uh, we have got darts, dartlets, including lancers, flitters, red eyes and demons, hoopers, bobs, swifts and aces. So these are the various categories of uh, skippers. I'll cover a few of them, not much. We don't have the scope to uh, talk, uh, uh, keep on going on this. Let's go to the next slide. First is the three uh, awls. Very, uh, one is very common, or uh, to my right is the common banded awl, which is uh, very common in city areas. This band is very thin and a very my, minute line. In case of Plain banded all, which is not a very common species uh, in the cities. It is uh, further towards the Western Ghats we can find them. This is just like a chalk marking. If you put a chalk in your hand and mark it, as Dr. Kalish used to say, uh, you put a chalk and just put a scratch on the board. The marking we get, uh, it is wide, broad. One side is very prominent, other side is uh, fading away. It is the difference between a common banded doll and the plain banded doll. And the third banded doll is the white banded doll, which is mostly found near the rivers, uh, streams. Uh, in the plain banded doll, will there is sorry in the white banded doll, the white band is very very prominent. The white band is very prominent, very thick white band. Both sides of the band uh, are uh, having a clear distinctive edges. Whereas in case of uh, the plain banded doll, one side is having the uh, very clear um, uh, uh, boundaries. Quickly, I'll finish. This uh, common slow flat and suffused slow flat, uh, the difference is uh, very obvious. You can see in the, they look very same, but you see this uh, uh, 
spots here. There are four spots in uh, uh, common so flat uh, in the band. Uh, this two uh, central spots are shifted out of the uh, of the curve, whereas in the suffused snow flat, these are in the curve. That is the easiest way to differentiate between the common snow flat and the suffused snow flat. When you see in the field, uh, this uh, there are four uh, spots here. Two spots are shifted out towards the margin, and in suffused snow flat, uh, these two uh, all the spots are in the same line. The dots, the palm dots. Uh, the dark palm dot you see here uh, this this yellow band yellow band it is continuous in the wing this is a continuous band in the wing and in plain palm dot sorry pale palm dot also it is very continuous band in the wing in plain palm dot this is broken this band is broken i'm talking about the uh, species here and uh, you see in dark palm dot this this fringes are small these fringes are small in uh, dark pale, pale palm dot this is touching the margin these fringes are touching the margin the so very long elongated fringes are there this the spikes they touch the margin in dark palm dot there are hardly any spikes and they don't uh, go and touch the margin. It's a very easy way to distinguish between these palm dots. It is a male, and because there's a brand, this uh, the silvery color is brand is visible. So is the is the case of the male, and uh, the females don't have the brand. And in plain palm dot, you see the bro. This area is broken, and uh, uh, though so that makes the the three distinguished uh, distinctive species. Go to the next slide quickly. The Pilapidas Matthias. The Pilapidas Matthias and uh, Pilapidas Agna. In both in the both Pilapidas Matthias and the Pilapidas Agna, uh, they they look uh, similar. But if you see, there is a brand here, a small smallish brand here for the male. In the case of uh, Agna, also there is a brand here, but in uh, Matthias, these two spots they fall in between that brands. In Agna, they basically go and dissect or or uh, they touch the corner of the brand. The edge of the brand they touch this the imaginary line from the two spots, uh, the cell spots. They touch the corner of the brand. In case of Agna, in case of Matthias. Uh, the two spots they just bisect the they bisect the, uh, the brand in the case of male. Next, there's a slide between the, 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 the all the three swifts here. First is the Matthias or Pelavida swift. In Pelavida swift, always you'll find the open wing. There's a spot here, and there are three spots. Or more than three, sometimes depending upon the species, but they fall in a curve. They fall in a curve. The cell spot is fall always present. The, the brown is uh, darkish brown, and uh, uh, in case of uh, rice swifts, there are three spots here, and often there is a fourth spot found here, and there are no cell spot. There are no cell spot here. No cell spot. Similar in, in the case of uh, Parnara the, uh, or the 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 straight swifts, we can say there are four spots which are always in a line, always in a line. So that's how when you generally, if you want to find out which uh, which genus they fall into, Pilapidas, uh, Borbo, or Parnara, you can see this particular indicators: presence of cell spot, it's Pilapidas; absence of cell spot, and uh, uh, curvilinear uh, discal band spots makes it a uh, uh, borgo and four continuous spots uh, makes it a pornara swift. I'll go to the next slide. Swift ke baad. Now, the borgo kinara and borgo uh, bevani. And the difference is, uh, you know, these are rice swifts. I gave you the previous example. Uh, if I Draw the curve. 
there are three spots here can you see these three spots all the three spots are almost equidistant in case of a uh, borbo kinara in case of borbo bivani you see the difference the center spot is closer to the last spot and separated from the first spot that's how we differentiate between um, of course for differentiating uh, borbos and uh, you know you know uh, that and uh, even uh, if you talk about your pelopidas uh, uh, and uh, you talk about your rice chips we need to have both the open wing and the closed wing to come to the id of the exact id of the species but there are other species like caltores and uh, you know potanthus where uh, even uh, these you know features or the morphological features will not be will not be able to find out the exact species we need a specimen in hand for most of this uh, caltores uh, and uh, you know uh, potanthus species darts so i i come to the end of this uh, uh, this slide show i have taken about more than 2 hours i think uh, and i sincerely thanks to the indian foundation butterflies for allowing me to use the images for their uh, for this academic purpose and i sincerely thank the photographers to give me uh, the photographs uh, uh, to be used in this presentation and uh, now i'll uh, take some minutes for some questions from the participants questions please david David, hello. Yes, one second. Let me open the. Yes. Okay, I just opened the chat box. If you guys have any questions, please. Okay, let me ask you the first question. When are you going to come out with your book, uh, Bangalore and all? You've been working, no? Uh, actually, I'm not working with Bangalore butterflies. actually it's a on what beautiful book is coming uh, out from krishnameg and uh, uh, that your written the writing wonderful book uh, on uh, butterflies uh, and uh, basically you know city butterfly basically and more uh, citizen science citizen science oriented uh, book it's a beautiful book and uh, we are eagerly i am specially myself waiting for this book to come out and uh, shortly maybe in this in a span of maybe next 3 months it will be out this book Yes, Subhas. Subhas is going to ask question. Political. Ah, oh, many people participants are raising hands. Please, uh, how to see the questions? You want to, you want to unmute them? Can you come them in the chat? That would be. Show. Sure. One second, Subhas. Can I uh, see the chat? Yeah, please check it. I mean, yeah. I, I'll I'll stop the okay, sharing. Somebody the screen. Uh, asking. Okay, we'll come out of this. Uh, stop the share. I've stopped the share now. Okay. So a lot I of want to know are... about African sifter, Ratish. Hello. What? I want to know about African sifter from Ratish. There's a question. African, African straight sift. sift. Straight sift. See, there are this African this straight sift. Yeah, there are Panada only. Uh, till now, we have been uh, as a member of I and I found butterflies. I can tell you there is a uh, Panada page in the in the in the I found butterflies website, and one Panada species page has come up recently. In the last one week or two weeks, one page has come out. That is Panada gudatas. I think that is the only page. Rest two other two Panada Panada Wada and Panada Ganga they have. The species, the species are not created because it is not easy to uh, key them with only morphological traits. We need to dissect the data layer and find out in Panama. Okay, from Sharan, now uh, how to differentiate common line blue and a tailless if doesn't have a tail? Yeah, common line blues uh, basically when you see a uh, two specimens of common line blue and uh, tailless line blue in the by side by side. It, you will see the difference very prominent, especially the marginal area of the hind wing. See the 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 marginal zigzag part, the pattern in a tailless line blue is more prominent uh, and then in common line blue. It is very easy to distinguish between a common line blue and a tailless line blue. Otherwise, they look the same. 
but you, when you see them, uh, two very prominent species, uh, common man too and uh, uh, tailless time too, you will find the difference very uh, prominent, uh, that discal, that, uh, that is the marginal band, it's very, very prominent in case of uh, tailless time too. The, the V-shaped markings are very prominent. Okay. Uh... Another question said, what's the eye color of Indian oak blue? Huh? I remember rosy oak blue have iridescent green eyes. What is the eye color of Indian oak blue? I remember rosy oak blue have iridescent. Ah, okay. Uh, I just get back to the answer. <laughs> you, do, you could have seen that yourself for uh, a change. Uh, go to iPhone butterfly and see the eye color, man. Uh, <laughs> I could... It is not always possible for me to uh, remember the eye color because we don't see uh, Indian oak blues <coughs> here in South. So it is not, it is not in, the, in our minds. It is more in, in Kana and Madhya Pradesh where there are sal forests. <coughs> so here over time uh, in, 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 uh, in large quantities, you'll find uh, Indian oak blues there because they breathe on Sodia robusta. So uh, I'll say Indian oak blue. Let me see the color. It's a dog. It is something. Even it is a question to me, uh, or uh, 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 of course, it is uh, Indian uh, oak blue eye colors are black. Indian oak blue eye colors are black. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's a question from Subhash. Uh, what is the uh, how do you key out uh, Judy's? Judy's. Okay. Uh, see, there are two Judy's. Yes. And uh, for last two, three years, uh, we have been trying to key out Judy's, myself and Dr. Kalesh and uh, some other people. And uh, we have found that uh, the plum Judy's are confined to the south of Palkat Gap. Whereas these double planted Judy's are found everywhere. The, I'm talking about the Sahadi plum Judy, I'm not talking about the plum Judy which is found in the northeast. I'm talking about the southern uh, plum Judy. And you see in uh, uh, the plum Judy, uh, the discal band is continuous. It is not broken. And in case of uh, your uh, double gem banded Judy, uh, you will see the discal band is uh, not continuous. A curve. The curve is not smooth in uh, in the edge of the curve. Whereas in plum Judy, the edge of the curve is very smooth. That's how we differentiate between the two. Uh, but most of the cases we'll find double banded Judy's only. I have photographed uh, uh, my only one plum duty in my life. It is from uh, uh, Shandunya wildlife sanctuary uh, in the Rockwood area. Then I found, found, uh, photographed my plum duty. Uh, beyond that, I have never photographed a plum duty. Okay, uh, from Pratipa, uh, sir, why do you, why do butterflies sit in different position and places? I don't know. See, it is a. Uh, it, it is a basically behavioral uh, attitude of uh, species specific and sometimes a genus specific and sometimes you know uh, it is a family specific. If you talk about uh, uh, nawabs, you know nawabs uh, are rajas are not fond of sitting on flowers. Have you ever seen a nawab sitting on a flower? I don't think so. So nawabs are mainly interested to sit on a decayed, decaying flesh, even rajas and. Uh, uh, they uh, sit on, you know, uh, in uh, human uh, ex uh, the, the excreta and you know animal excreta and uh, uh, gaudy barons. They uh, love to sit on fruits. The evening browns they love to sit on fruits. The overripe fruits. The bush browns they love to sit on fruits. And uh, you know uh, some of the butterflies uh, love to sit always close wing. We will not find them. Grass yellows never sit, uh, you know, uh, with open wing. Even a, it is very difficult. Uh, almost impossible. I think David has photographed one uh, dark cerulean with open wing. I think from Kana. David? That's, that's uh, it's a very difficult that was, a dead, that was a dead specimen. Hello? Hello, David? That was a dead specimen, sorry. Uh, whatever it is, but it is, it is also not that always possible to get open wing shots of even common cerulean will not give you open wing uh, posture. They will not give you. So they, that is the uh, okay. portion of a butterfly, how they like to sit. You know, barons generally sit uh, open, uh, open wing, but sometimes you can find their closed wings also. It is, uh, uh, it is a tendency which has been developed over ages and sometimes it helps uh, the butterflies to perch for egg laying. If you see some uh, butterflies like leopards, the barons, 
they come and lay eggs uh, open wing they don't close their wings for laying eggs but other butterflies like crows and you know you know uh, tigers they lay lay eggs under the wing you know by closing their wings so there are there's a, that is species and family specific uh, behavior of butterflies where they like to perch some cerulius tend to uh, sit on a leaf and come to the edge they walk down to the edge have you seen that they sit on some place and they come to the edge that's how they they behave uh, in a judies they flutter uh, in a in a different way if you have seen judies that's how they have evolved they have, their evolution yeah. and their nature there is specific and it it needs a lot of uh, study to come out uh, for the reasons why they do it okay there's a question mm -hmm. from i think sarda bharti sir is there any butterfly recently discovered or rediscovered from western ghat yeah 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 it has been yeah there is a discovery of butterfly even i think last year it is uh, uh, the, the nearest is the uh, the eastern uh, that is your eastern part of the himalayas that uh, in assam that is common tit uh, mr puttaraju one scientist from gaiga she he has discovered a common tit from uh, from uh, from kaiga and it is a authentic uh, discovery because uh, near kaiga it is a vibhuti falls in sirsi he has discovered this uh, common tit and uh, we need to go there and photograph try to photograph it once again so this is a discovery a discovery this is not a rediscovery there are no reports of common tit from western guards in any, any literature and we talk about uh, uh, rediscovery we have rediscovered lilac silver line in 2012 and nitin ravikant achari they rediscovered it from bangalore as a gut after 100 years so these are the rediscoveries and of course we are in search of uh, the blue baron from western guards uh, hopefully shortly you know uh, maybe this season or next season after this pandemic is over we'll try to find it out the photographic uh, evidence of blue baron from western guards it is uh, their records are there the whole literature says yes anything Uh, I think we can take one more question and probably can you please put down your uh, uh, email ID there so people can contact you. My email ID. Oh my God! I will yes. put down my email ID. So I am available in this email ID always. So there is a question that can you differentiate between the larva of Pelopidas, Agna, and Mathias? of course the differences are there but very subtle differences are very subtle agna and mathas uh, no that the 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 pelopida species they larva even calcaries they larva look same so it is very difficult to distinguish the larva head capsules possibly uh, is a difference the head capsules of all of all the species at a mature state are different okay i think uh... we can stop the session here it was fantastic okay. ashok 2 hour yeah, 20 minutes 2 hour 20 minutes was fantastic we didn't get bored i mean a lot of information you are pumping one by one information i mean we learned a lot i mean thank you so much i mean uh, from uh, on behalf of cotton uh, you know uh, tolerating me for 2 hours 20 minutes i never have been you know chance to speak for so many hours thank you very much it was a pleasure hearing you yeah, thank you so much and uh, yeah uh, stay Stay all of you and uh, stay healthy, and see you tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good night.